Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another book miss video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. If you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you so much for returning to another video. Today we are going to go through and recap how I've done with my TBR for the past year. So I came back to booktube after a very long break in late September of 2022 and then I got my TBR game back up and running and I believe my first round of that was probably November. And so since I've now been playing it for over a year I thought it would be interesting to go back and see how I've actually done with the TBRs that I've set for myself. And now not only am I playing my TBR game but I'm also doing challenge pulls every single month as well. So if you've been following my TBR for a while you will know that I start each video with two or three maybe even four challenge pulls before I get into the gameplay. And so I wanted to go back and see how I've actually done. Now, just based on instinct, I feel like I've done a pretty good job, but we're going to find out for sure at the end of today's video. Now, I do realize that it probably would be a little bit more interesting for me to actually film reaction videos to my past TBRs to see what I did read and what I didn't read. And I may consider that for next year. That is actually something that I think I would need to practice and plan out because first of all, I've never done anything like that before on my channel. And also since my TBR videos are not straightforward, there are multiple layers to my TBR videos, I think it might be very long and complicated for me to do that. So that is definitely something that I would need to set a lot of time to do. So that is something that I have on my radar for next year should I go ahead and proceed with Bookmas in 2024. I do understand that that would be a lot more interesting than me just sitting here and telling you what was on my TBR each month and how I did. I get it. So I hope that you'll bear with me. Today all I'm going to do is literally talk to you about all of the books that were on each TBR each month and how I did. My official TBR every month only constitutes the challenge polls and the TBR game prompts. So there may be other books that I have on my radar each month, maybe books that I need to read for my book club, or maybe books that I know are going to be coming in from my library. Those are books that if I get to, great, but they are not my official TBR. So for today's purposes, we are only talking about books that I need to read as a result of the challenge polls and the gameplay. We are going to do a full year of TBR. So from December of 2022 through November of 2023, obviously I can't do December of this year because we are still in December and I'm still actively making my way through my TBR, but we do have 12 months of TBR. TBR videos to revisit. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So of course, starting with December of 2022. Now back in December, I was not actually doing challenge pulls. I had not implemented them during that time. So we only have books that I was reading as a result of gameplay prompts. So these are the books that were on my TBR. Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which I did read and really enjoyed. Bountiful by Serena Bowen, which was the fourth book in her True North romance series. I did read that and I did really enjoy that. Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I attempted to read that and I DNF'd it. Nevermore is a middle grade. Y'all know how I feel about middle grades. I just couldn't do it. I am not a middle grade girly and I just have to accept that about myself. So I have DNF'd it and it has since been gifted to one of my husband's nephews. Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, which I did read and enjoyed. Daisy Darker by Alice Sweeney, which I did read and I did not enjoy. In fact, that ended up as one of my worst books of 2022. I ranted like crazy about that on my channel. So unfortunately that one was a dud. Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I got to start the Finley Donovan series last year. I did read that of course, because this year I have since read books two and three and I'm now completely caught up in the series until the fourth book comes out next year. And then the final book I had to read and it was actually the last book I read in 2022 was The Rewind by Alison Wynn Scotch. I read that and it was really just okay, kind of forgettable and I've since unhauled it. Moving on into January, I had to read Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco to finish her Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which I did read and complete. I also needed to start the Alex Stern series with Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I did read and enjoyed and I do hope to be continuing that series this year. I needed to read Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. I did read, I didn't enjoy, and it has since been unhauled. The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which I did read, and I do have kind of complicated feelings about that one, but I did read it. The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, I did read, I didn't enjoy, and it is currently up on Pango, ready to go to its next forever home. And then the final book that I needed to read for January was Surviving Savannah by Patty Callahan, which I did read, it was okay, and again, this is another one that will be going up on Pango if it's not up there already. Moving on into February, the first book that I needed to read was a Mary Kubica. I selected just the nicest couple for this. I did read that and it was just okay. Nothing special. Next was A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer to complete her Curse Breakers trilogy, which I did read. Next, I needed to read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I did read that and I loved it. That one was actually a very surprising five-star read for me. Then I needed to read a book box selection. I ended up selecting The Sweet Spot 
by Amy Popel and I enjoyed that one a lot more than I thought that I was going to. Next I had to read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score and that was a DNF. I tried it, it was not working for me so I ultimately stopped reading it pretty early on in the book. That does it for February. Moving on into March I had to read Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier which I did read and I really enjoyed. It's one of my favorite Jennifer Hillier so far. I also needed to read Missing Pieces by Heather Gutenkopf which I did read. The Passengers by John Mars. I did read that and I enjoyed it. What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I definitely did read that and enjoyed that immensely and so I did decide to go ahead and pick up her newest release which was an early release for Book of the Month in December. I am hyped to get to that one. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson was also on my TBR for March and I really enjoyed that one. I'm looking forward to continuing. I also needed to read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I did read that. And then the final book that I needed to read for that TBR was a Jane Harper. In the video I said I was going to read The Exiles which was the third book in her Aaron Falk detective series but I ultimately decided to read The Survivors instead so I did satisfy that prompt just with a different book than what I had originally stated in the TBR video. Moving on into April the first book I selected to read was The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain. I read that and really enjoyed it. Next was When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. That was specifically to satisfy a reading challenge. It's a nonfiction memoir. I read it and it was okay. It didn't affect me as I think it affected a lot of other people but I did read it. Next I had to read King of Crows by Libba Bray to complete her Diviner series. I did read that. I also needed to read Kingdom of the Curse by Carrie Maniscalco which is the second book in her Kingdom of the Wicked series and I did read that. Spells for Forgetting was also on that TBR and of course I read that and really enjoyed it. And then the final book that was on my April TBR was The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I read that and it was okay. It wasn't like a meh forgettable read for me but it wasn't anything super mind-blowing either. Moving on into May I needed to read the next book in the Burying Water series by K.A. Tucker. That was the third book Chasing River and I did read that. Then I also needed to read an Alex Finley. I selected Every Last Fear and I did read that. Next I needed to read the next book in the Ten Tiny Breaths series also by K.A. Tucker and ultimately I decided that I was not going to continue with that series. I tried to read the second book. It was just too young and juvenile. I did not like the direction that it was heading so I decided to DNF that book and then of course subsequently decided to DNF the series. Next I needed to read The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater which I did read and completed the Raven Cycle. I also selected to read Fly Away by Chris and Hannah which completed the Firefly Lane duology. I needed to read Stay Awake by Megan Golden which I did read and very much enjoyed. I think it's my favorite Megan Golden to date so far. And the last book on May's TBR was The Martian by Andy Weir which I did read and enjoyed. Already moving on into June the first book that I selected to read was The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I did read that and unfortunately it didn't work too well for me so I will not be continuing with Rachel Lynn Solomon in the future. Next I needed to read the next book in the Eddie Flynn series which ended up being 13 which is book three or four depending on where you look but the other book that was listed as book three didn't actually have an audiobook available so I went ahead and read 13. I also needed to read the next book in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. That was book five. Faithless I believe was the title and I did read that. Next I selected to read The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. The only reason why I chose this to satisfy a TBR game prompt was because it was going to be a book club pick for a book club that I had just joined. I decided to go ahead and leave that book club but the main reason that I decided to not read The Chateau in June was just because there was a super long library wait and I couldn't get a hold of it and by the time it was ready I had just like lost interest in it entirely so I did not read that one. Another one that I decided not to read was For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. This was a selection from Aardvark Book Club and I just really didn't want it but at the time Aardvark did not have their skip option I believe so I was really obligated to get something. This was the closest thing to anything that I was possibly interested in but I really just had no urge to read it so I went ahead and didn't read it and so I took a punishment by unhauling the book. Then I selected to read House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass, which I did read. I also selected to read The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates which I did read and the very final book was to read Hook, Line, and Sinker which was the second and final book in Tessa Bailey's The Bellinger Sisters duology which I did read and I enjoyed. Moving on into July I was supposed to read the next book in the Bromance book club series which was going to be book two Undercover Bromance but I was actually doing a Christmas in July reading vlog during July and so I ultimately ended up selecting book five. So I did read another book and the Bromance book club series but it was not the original one that I selected in that video. I also needed to read The Atlas Paradox which was the second book in the Atlas 6 series by Olive Blake and y'all know how I feel about that series. I DNF'd The Atlas Paradox at 100 pages and I am completely unhauling all of the editions of those books that I have. I also needed to read Educated by Tara Westover. This was one that I ultimately decided not to read. It was one that had been on my TBR for ages because I had heard so many amazing things about it but I'm just not a nonfiction girly unless it's true crime and I just kind of have to be real with myself about that. So even though I was fascinated by the premise of that story I just couldn't bring myself to read it. I didn't even feel like giving it a chance so I ultimately decided not to read it and again I took a punishment by unhauling the book. Next I needed to read Stacey Willingham's newest release All the Dangerous Things and I very much enjoyed that one. It was stronger to me than A Flicker in the Dark. I also needed to read The Phantom Prince by Elizabeth Kendall. Elizabeth 
Kendall was Ted Bundy's longtime girlfriend. So it was interesting to read a book from her perspective because you can only guess as to what she was going through. So it was really, really fascinating. I enjoyed that one a lot. I also decided to read The Last Word by Taylor Adams, which was one of my most anticipated releases of 2023. And unfortunately, it was kind of a dud. I went on a huge rant in the wrap up that I did for that book, but I didn't necessarily hate it overall. Like it wasn't a terrible story. It just was not what I was wanting, but I did read it. I also needed to read The 100 Years of Lenny and Margo, which I did read. And the final book on July's TBR was A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson, which I very much enjoyed. Alice Henderson is quickly becoming a staple thriller author for me. I very much enjoy the Alex Carter series. Already moving on into August, starting with the next book in the Stephanie Plum series, which was 12 Sharp at the time, I did read that. I also needed to read Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. I didn't read that, but I had a good reason. During August, I was participating in the Amazing Readathon, and one of the prompts was to read a book with three or more people on the cover. And I had the hardest time finding a book that actually satisfied that. One of the books I came across was a book called My Dear Hamilton, and that was a very thick historical fiction. It was over 700 pages. I read it. I loved it. It took me a long time, but I ultimately decided that I just was going to go ahead and give myself some grace and read that and not read Secrets of a Charmed Life, especially because Secrets of a Charmed Life was in my challenge cup and it didn't need to be anymore because I was going to use it to satisfy a specific challenge, and I used little secrets to satisfy that challenge instead. And so it didn't even need to be there at the time. At the time, I had not updated my challenge cup to feature my entire physical TBR. It was purely in that cup to satisfy a challenge, which had already been satisfied. So I didn't feel bad not reading it, especially since I decided to read a different historical fiction, which was a lot chunkier in nature. So I ultimately did decide to go ahead and not read that. Next, I needed to read the next book in the Tracy Crosswhite series, which was book number five called Close to Home. I did read that. I also needed to read You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley, which I did read. Dark Corners by Megan Golden was also on that TBR. I did read that and very much enjoyed. Next, I needed to read a prompt with a book that was set in a foreign country. And I'm mentioning the prompt, not the book, because in the video, I had originally said I wasn't going to select anything official, but I had tentatively selected Secrets of a Charmed Life. But I knew because we were doing the amazing readathon that I was likely going to easily find something else that was set in another country. I ultimately picked up The Five by Helly Rubenhold, which satisfied this prompt. Then I needed to read The Violin Conspiracy, which was to satisfy a book with red on the cover. And My Dear Hamilton actually had red on the cover. So like I said, that was a thicker book than I was expecting. It took me several days to finish it. And so because of that, I gave myself some grace and I allowed myself to swap The Violin Conspiracy with My Dear Hamilton. So it wasn't the original book that I was planning on reading, but I did satisfy the prompt. So I did not take a punishment on that. The Violin Conspiracy did end up getting read in the next month, I believe. And then the very final prompt I needed to satisfy for that month was Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro, which I did read. All right, moving on into September, I needed to read Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover, which was a tiny little novella that I couldn't read before reading Maybe Someday. Luckily, Maybe Someday ended up fitting into a gameplay prompt. So I read both Maybe Someday and Maybe Not. I also needed to go ahead and start the Will Trent series, the first book being Triptych. I did not read that in September. However, that was only because there was a very long wait for it at my library. So I took a punishment and rolled it over into the next month whenever it was available, but I was going to do that anyway. So I didn't really count it as a punishment, but technically that's what it was. Then I needed to read Hadley and Grace by Suzanne Redbeard, which I did read. Then once again, I pulled the next book in the Eddie Flynn series. Y'all know that there are some complications with that series that I don't necessarily understand. Like I mentioned before, books three and four are different depending on where you look. And not only that, but not all of his books have audio. Like book three, which I believe was called The Liar, didn't have an audiobook, but book four, 13, had an audiobook. And then I couldn't find audiobooks four, five, six, or seven. In fact, if I remember correctly, the audiobook for book five is not even expected to be out for like a couple of years, and I have no idea why that is. So when I got to picking out the next book in the Eddie Flynn series, I couldn't find an audio. So I was like, okay, that's out. So I ended up drawing again. I drew the next book in the Desert Plain series by Victor Methos, which actually worked out really well because that was another legal thriller. Both Eddie Flynn and the Desert Plain series are legal thrillers. So long story short, I ended up having to read Crimson Lake Road by Victor Methos instead, and I did read that. Next, I needed to read the next book in the Bromance Book Club series, which this time I did read Undercover Bromance. And then I did ultimately end up needing to read Violin Conspiracy for basically the same TBR prompt that I selected it for back in August. So I did finally read that book. Then I was able to read The Only One Left by Riley Sager and I loved it. It was fantastic. And then finally the last book was to read The Family Game by Katherine Stedman, which I did read and I actually really enjoyed that one. All right, we're getting down to it. Only two more to go. So starting with October, obviously Triptych rolled over into October. It finally came in from my library and I did read that one. I also needed to read False Witness 
Witness, which was also by Karen Slaughter, and I did read that. Next, the challenge pool was to read a banned book. That was, again, for a specific reading challenge, and I pretty much knew when I made that video that I was not going to be reading a banned book. So my punishment for not reading the banned book was basically to say that I couldn't satisfy that challenge at all. I had missed my opportunity to satisfy that challenge pool, and that's okay because I really wasn't planning on doing so anyway. Then I needed to read the next book in the True North series by Serena Bowen, which was Speakeasy, and I did read that. I also had a challenge pull to start the Gold Rush Ranch series by Elsie Silver, and I made the decision not to start that series. I realized it wasn't what I was looking for. I've since made the decision that I'm really not a romance series girly, and so I'm really not going to start any of those unless I know for absolute certain that I'm going to want to continue. Like, if I read the first book and it absolutely blows me away, I will continue with it, but for the most part, that's just not the case with Elsie Silver. I'm not even going to be completing her Chestnut Spring series, so I really don't feel the need to start another series by her. So that was one that, again, I didn't start, and my punishment is that now I can't start the series. Next, I needed to read All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, which I did read. Also needed to read Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan, which I did read. From Below by Darcy Coates was also on my TBR, and I ultimately decided to DNF that one. I also got the opportunity to read the second book in the Finley Donovan series, which I was very happy about. I very much enjoyed that one. I then needed to read Finger Licking 15, which was the next book that I needed to read in the Stephanie Plum series, which I did read. And then the final TBR book for October was actually the final book in the Desert Plain series up until this point, which was An Unreliable Truth by Victor Methos. All right, and we are finally in the very last month, which of course was this past month, November. So I recently just recapped that in my December TBR, so you're probably very familiar with this already. But the very first book that I needed to read was the next book in the Hades and Persephone saga by Scarlett St. Clair. I have made the decision to DNF that series because, again, I'm not really a romance series girly. I wasn't blown away enough by the first book to really continue, and I should have just kind of gone with my instincts on that. So I have decided not to continue with that series. Next, I needed to read The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel, which I did read. Once again, I drew Finley Donovan, so I read the third book in the Finley Donovan series, and I'm now caught up in that series until the next book comes out. If I remember correctly, in that video, I had landed, I think, on the book box selection, and I didn't make an official selection within the video, but I ended up reading Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister to satisfy that prompt. I also needed to read The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore, which I did read. And then the very final book that was on that TBR was Never Alive by Frieda McFadden, which I did read as well. All right, everybody. So that is how I did with all of the TBRs that I set for myself since December of 2022. So if my math is correct, I had 87 individual books on my TBRs. Out of those 87, I successfully read 75 of them, which I think is pretty darn good. And then five of them I considered DNFs, meaning I got at least several chapters into the book and then decided it wasn't for me and I wasn't going to read them. And then the remaining seven are books that I either didn't even try to satisfy or I maybe got a couple chapters chapters in and decided not to. I don't ever consider those DNFs. I consider them trial periods. So ultimately, I think that that was pretty good. Out of 87 books, I only didn't read 12 of them. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. I will, of course, be continuing with my TBR game and the challenge polls in 2024. So I hope that you will come along with me. Please comment down below and let me know how you like to choose your TBR. Are you a mood reader or are you more structured like I am? Like, I need to be told what I'm reading every month. I can't just have a wide variety of choices out there. So I prefer a more structured TBR and I think that's probably why I'm a little little bit more successful at this. So please comment down below and let me know how you select your TBRs and let me know how you think you did with your TBRs in 2023 if you selected them or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of gameplay emoji. So maybe a game controller or deck of cards or something like that. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments down below. I love the engagement and it really helps me and my channel. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'm participating in book miss meaning from December 1st through December 25th. You should see one video upload from me a day. And if you want to see what content I have in store, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out on anything that is upcoming. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I've talked about in this video. Although I will not be linking every single book that I've had on my TBR, y'all. I'm just not going to do that. So sorry about that. <laughs> but until next time, guys. Bye.